Here's what you call a flip. Ten keys from a car to brick. Bentley from here. Hi guys, this is my iPhone 11 Pro Max video. Um, if you've never seen a video which I've done, then welcome to my world. This I've had for since October 30th. So October 30th to January 19th, which is the date today. Um, you can say I've had it for the better part of about 80 days. And I think that's the time I wanted to take to form an opinion about the iPhone 11 Pro Max. I have the silver variant. I seldom use it in this format. I keep changing my cases and presently, just yesterday I got this Pegan kickstand case, which is okay. Um, this case costs about 1100 bucks, but we're not reviewing the case entirely. What we are looking to do is, um, what I am looking to do is basically give you a, you know, a kind of a in depth review and analysis of this phone. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna begin with things I really like about this phone. And uh, the this one might be an obvious one, and I'm sure a lot of you are expecting it. Um, my primary phone used to be a Pixel 3a XL, and my secondary phone used to be an S9 Plus. Um, initially, I used this as my secondary phone. I replaced the S9 Plus, and now it is my primary phone, and the Pixel 3a XL, the phone which is shooting this video, is my secondary phone. Is this a good primary device? Is this a good um, daily device? I think for most of it, yes. I think this is in every way um, the best uh, primary phone that I have had in recent times. Um, again, it does come with a few shortcomings, which I will come to later. But I think iOS, if you talk about iOS in itself, this is the most Android like it's ever been. Of course, I love the Android operating system. The operating system on, on my Pixel 3a XL uh, of Android 10, it, it's absolutely amazing, very intuitive, very good graphically. Um, there are some shortcuts on the Android which are completely amazing and mind-blowing. Um, speaking about mind-blowing, the mind-blowing thing about this phone is its camera. I think um, I'm not gonna get bored of it and even after a year, I shall be talking about it. Um, the f this is a 256 GB variant and if you are getting into um, an iPhone 11 Pro you know, or Pro Max, I suggest you try the 256 GB variant because the last thing you want to do is be wondering or worrying about you know, the size of the images and photos and media. I intend to keep this phone for at least two years um, and for that matter, I think it's, it's good to have a 256 GB variant. Um, is it heavy? Yes. Do I did, have I gotten used to his heft? Yes and no. I say no because if I put, um, you know, like if, if I use a Spigen um, shield or kind of a, a big case, it definitely has a lot of heft. So this case is a light case, so I like to use this. I also buy those uh, cheap silicone cases from Amazon, and those do a fair fair job. Um, is it? Am I comfortable using it without? Um, you know, a screen like like a, a case. No, um, I have a kid and he loves to throw around things, so I don't want to be doing that. Um, the other thing, uh, so the camera is pretty good, both for videos and for photographs. You'll find that it uh, has some deep fusion technology. What that does is that no matter what uh, photograph you take, it actually you know makes the best possible image out of it and uh, it takes 10 shots and then it combines the 10 shots to shoot the best possible image. So I find that the camera is a big reason to get this phone. Um, if you are into photography, of course, if you are a boring person who doesn't take photographs, um, then don't get it. If you are someone who likes to travel a lot with your family or you're by yourself and you like to take those photographs out of the airplane, this is your phone. Um, the video is amazing. So just based on the fact that it has an amazing camera alone, I think this is quite a worthy uh, phone. Um, not to say that if you, in, in today's day and time that you don't find other phones which have an amazing camera, but this is the best out there. Like, let's face it, guys, there's nothing which, can, which even comes close to these three cameras. Um, you have the wide camera, you have the telephoto camera, and then you have the main camera. Um, I don't use the zoom in camera too much. So even if you get the iPhone 11, I think you'll get the best of this. 
Um, having said that, I haven't used the iPhone 11. I've used this phone. So that's one reason I really like it. The second reason I like this phone is how fast it charges. Um, what I do is I use my MacBook USB-C uh, adapter and I plug that into this. And um, if, I, if I'm at 20%, I will reach 80% in, um, I think, 40 minutes max. So it's a very fast charger, um, you know, and it seems to do wonders for this. I like that. Um, is the battery good? Yes. Is it great? Is it as great as they are saying? No, it's not. This is not a foolproof battery. Uh, sometimes what happens is that um, if I if I haven't charged it overnight and it's like let's say at forty four percent in the in the morning, um, and I and I go to work, I think by around um, five p.m. it'll be at ten percent, and that can be very stressful because it does so much work when it works. So you want you want to make sure you have at least 20% on all times. Of course, the battery saving mode is very efficient and gets the job done. Even on battery saving mode, um, you know, the iPhone 11 does not slow down. But then if I, I, I didn't buy this phone so I can put it on the battery save mode. I bought this phone because I heard the battery is a beast. Yes, the battery is a beast, but sometimes, just sometimes you find that it's draining way too much. It could boil down to the fact that I actually use it quite often. Um, now I, I have to be honest, though I, I consider myself quite a techie and all that sort of thing. I don't think I understand these stats at all. Like they are so confusing. So if any of you bright guys out there can make sense of this, please do. Um, I think I get about six hours of screen on time, um, on average, which I think is good enough for me. I keep the brightness at full. Of course, I use the true tone technology, which makes text very readable. Um, is this the best screen out there? I don't think so. I think Samsung phones have a better screen. I also sometimes feel that the optimization of text on my Pixel 3a XL is superior to the iPhone. So, um, which brings me to my next topic. Let's talk about the display. Um, if I'm watching YouTube, um, let me just put in one of my own videos. You know, let's say I'm, I'm watching my, this video was shot on my iPhone, by the way. This you know. is seven door Farigamo. So as you can see, I don't know if the camera can tell you, but the video is very neutral and that's something which you've got to admire about uh, Apple. And also at the same time, if you used other variants like Samsung and so on, I'm pretty sure you can get a better screen out there. This is just a very safe and sound um, screen. I wish they had some optimization options. Like for example, I wish in the display they had something which could be like, hey, if you like a Samsung kind of a you know, a, a completely amped out display, then you should probably click there or something of that sort. Um, unfortunately, they don't have that. Um, I'm gonna quickly put this on do not disturb so nobody calls me or messages me. Um, okay, I'm, I'm, so I've spoken about the display. Um, it's okay for viewing videos. I don't, I, I'm slightly disappointed because I spent like um, a lakh or something like that on this phone. Um, so after spending so much money, I feel the display is, is good. It's very safe, but it does make me miss my Samsung display. Even the S9 Plus has an amazing dynamic display. My Pixel 3a XL also sometimes is, looks and feels much better than this. Um, so the display, I want to give it 3.5 out of 5. Uh, the battery, I will give 4 out of 5. And, um... You know, the first thing I spoke about iOS and all that, I'll come to in a bit. Um, the camera is an easy five on five. Make no mistake, there's no better camera out there than this. I'm sure you have a couple of friends who say, oh, look what my Samsung done. Oh, look what my, uh, you know, uh, Huawei did. And look what my OnePlus do has done. But I swear by this camera, it gets the job done. The selfie camera also has a widening effect now. And... That can be quite a lot of fun if you know, you know, for Apple has always struggled with group selfies. I feel if there are two or three guys in the photograph and you take, if you have an iPhone 7 or 8 um, or even the 10 for that matter, I think at best it'll be able to capture two people correctly. Whereas this phone can easily accommodate about eight to 10 people. Is it, it still has some work to do. I'm pretty sure Apple will work on that and tweak it in the future to get more detail in. But for now, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, Text can text is very easy to read on this. Um, just give me a moment. I'm going to put the, the case on. 
So now we have the case on. The good thing about this case is that it's a very big phone. So if I'm having my lunch at work, I can actually use it like this. Um, so that's very handy to have in a phone. Um, definitely, it, it, I, I, I will be using this very often. Like I said, this case is just a day or two old. Um, the other things about the um, iPhone I want to talk about is the sound. I do not think they've done any good with the sound. I don't think the sound is loud enough. Like when I was uh, when I when I heard this phone came out and the way they showed the the sound, you know, and um, it's not very amped. It's not very loud. I'm not saying it's a bad sound, but then with Apple and the amount you spend, you somewhere feel that hey, I've spent this money and I hope it has a decent sounding speakerphone. But if I'm being absolutely um, truthful. I feel the Pixel 3a XL um, is as loud as the iPhone. I also find that the Pixel 3a XL, I hate to say this, the sound on the Pixel 3a XL is far better. I mean, not far better, but it sounds better. If I play a song on my Pixel 3a XL, it sounds far better. And I'm not just saying this because I feel so or um, I'm a bit neurotic. I genuinely feel that because I've had two or three people test it and they've all suggested the Pixel 3 XL has a better speaker. So if you're spending a lakh plus on one lakh rupees or more on a phone and then you have a 40,000 rupee phone, which, you know, the Pixel 3 XL has a better better um, speaker, you feel a bit robbed of your money. And now uh, compared to the Pixel 3 XL, definitely this has a better battery life. This is probably the best battery life I've seen on a phone. And because the phone is so good, I, I love the swipe feature. I think it has, it works. Oops. Most off. Okay, dude, it's not going to work right now because I'm on camera, but it usually works. And I, I, I don't ever use it, but when I do, it's good to know that it's there. Um, so I have spoken now about the sound. Um, it's again, 3.5 out of 5 that I'm going to give it for the sound. Um, as, let's talk about iOS a little. Um, this is this has iOS 13. Um, it's a stable operating system. However, it has frozen I've, uh, maybe five to seven times on me um, since I've had it. Okay, not five to seven times, maybe five times. Let's say five times it has frozen on me, which means that I'm using an application and the application is not working. Um, two times I've had to hard reset it also because it froze. Now, I've never had a phone which does not freeze. Um, trust me, there's no phone which does not freeze once in a way. So I'm absolutely fine with that. Talking about iOS, this is the most Android-like iOS version I've ever seen. There are so many options and various things you can do. For example, if I go into a photograph, let's say I go into this photograph of this burger. Um, if I just press this button, then it shows me all the people I can, you know, message this to or I can probably, you know, go ahead and choose more options. This never used to be there. In fact, sometimes it even gives you an option to edit your actions and you can add more actions. So the call to action or the fact that you can change so many things. Um, of course, being an, an old, old school iPhone user, I find that it is um, intuitive, but do I really need it or do I really use it can be confusing. Hell yes, it can be very confusing for someone who's just looking to get the job done. If you're coming from Android, you will be a little confused, but it's not a deal breaker at all, man. I want to give the iOS about um, four stars out of five. So that's a pretty good rating. Is it better than Android 10? No. Does, does the Pixel 3 XL um, you know, work better as a soft operating system than this? Yes. Is this phone faster than the Pixel 3 XL? Yes. Does the phone work amazing even on this battery saving mode? Yes. By the way, this battery saving mode is not there by default. You can go to settings and then control center and you can choose the buttons you want to have on your display, you know, and you can add and subtract. This works on all iPhones, you know, which have this operating system. Anyways, um, a cool thing now is that I don't get the battery percentage here, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, let's come to unlocking. So here is my phone. I'm trying to unlock it from this distance. Is it going to work? No. Is it going to work? No. Can I just unlock it? No. It's being an idiot? No. You know, now I have to punch it in. And I, I think about 10 to 13 times in a day I punch it in. Um, and then if I have to unlock it, I have to seriously give it a look. You know, now it's finally recognized my face. Dude, 
Face ID is bad. I don't like Face ID. Put in a different mechanism. Give me an on-screen option of just using my finger or have some kind of a you know touch-sensitive thing. Or the Touch ID was far smoother than this Face ID thing. I understand it's very secure and all that, but security is my second um, prerequisite. The first prerequisite is it being functional, and I don't think Face ID is good. Imagine me, uh, like you know, supposing I'm, I'm I'm shaving or I'm brushing my teeth, and I have my hands full, and I'm just trying to play something on the phone. I have to literally say something like, "Hey Siri." Play music from my library. Playing all songs shuffled. So it worked that time, but I don't want to use Siri, man. I just want to unlock it, you know, and since it's a waterproof phone, I want to just get it all dirty and watery and want to use it. But then if it's not working, literally I have to wipe my hands and then type 66, you know, whatever my password is. I almost said it right there. I have to look at it. It's just very irritating. Face ID is not a good thing. This is my first ever experience with Face ID and I must tell you guys, it's not good. I, I, my previous iPhone, I should let you guys know, was an iPhone 8. Lovely phone, very expensive, not worth the price. And this is my phone after that. I spent two years away from the, uh, you know, like from upgrading and I finally got this. The iPhone 8 was amazing with an amazing camera, but it was the same form factor. It was a 4.7 inch screen. This is a 6.5 inch screen. Um, I'm not impressed with Face ID and for Face ID, I want to give it 2.5 out of 5. Because I want more options, dude. I don't want to be punching my, my, my code in, in 2020, man. That just seems so outdated. Like, what's up with that, Apple? Bad Apple. Um, moving on, of course, you have the mute switch on the side. Um, you have the left and right switch. Um, Face ID sometimes does work. Uh, but sometimes you're walking on the road and you literally want to do something. Or if you're driving, you want to do something. It's so stupid, man. By the time I reach out to this, I'm like, screw this, man. I just start using my Pixel 3a XL, man. It always works. And it has that, you know, um, my finger, like I, I can put it on the back of it here on the Pixel 3a XL and it just unlocks. And there's still no replacement to that kind of comfort. And uh, for that reason, I don't like um, it. I wish I did not do that. Since we are on the subject of uh, the, you know, the iOS, I want to also say a couple of things. Let me just punch in my password real quick. Again, see, it's asking me for the password again. It's so irritating. Anyways, um, Apple Music or the new music app, this is complete trash. They have ruined something which Apple used to excel at. Apple used to have the best library with iOS 7, iOS 8. It was classic. I enjoyed listening to music on it. I enjoyed going through my library. You see this? It's so foolish. I have till date not figured out what it wants me to do here. I want to listen to ABBA. I want to listen to a song. Granted, it plays. But why is it so confusing? I don't want to be seeing this. I just want to see what's on my phone. Now I need to go to settings and then music and then figure it out. Man, who has time to do all that? They've ruined the library, completely ruined the library. I find myself never ever listening to uh, music using this application anymore. And it's such a sad thing. It used to sit right here with the previous operating systems. But with time, Apple has murdered this. What Apple has tried to do is trying to, you know, merge everything together. Like instead of having an iCloud and, you know, everything is merged into one little burst. And it's so confusing, man. It's so confusing and irritating. Why have I got a 256 GB iPhone if you're going to give me such a terrible standard player? Really, this is something Apple needs to get back to just keeping it simple, stupid. Again, look, I now do this. I want to make sure I have, you know, 4G connectivity or Wi-Fi. It's going to play. It's not going to play. God knows. It thinks about it for five minutes because I'm five seconds because I'm home and it plays it. Man, what happened to simplicity, dude? Absolutely ruined my, my experience. I have Apple Music, but I never use it. I only use it when I'm driving and I don't want to have an accident. So I say something like, hey, Siri, play chill radio. 
It says Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran. God damn it. I don't want to listen to Ed Sheeran. His music is trash. And if you listen to Ed Sheeran's music, you must up your music in life. I'll try it once more. Hey Siri. Hey Siri. Uh-huh. Play chill radio. Finally, I don't understand Not my Indian accent. What the hell is up with that, man? You embarrass me on the camera, bro. Not cool at all. Not cool. I don't like it. I had a screen protector on this thing. I paid like 300 rupees for that. But I got rid of it because I thought that the 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 screen quality, like um, the brightness and the whole thing was getting infected by that. Yes, this is scratch prone and all that. It's even more scratch prone than the previous generation I've read. So if you have a 10s Max and you have this, the 10s Max has the better screen in terms of being scratch proof than the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Do I care about it? Yeah, a little bit. Is it a deal breaker? Not at all. Um, I also want to say, remember the time they used to have Photo Stream on your Mac OS and you could probably go and do that. I don't know where it's gone, dude. Like if I go to my settings right now and I go to my my iCloud and I try to go to my, you know, my photos, you know, this is so confusing. My iCloud photos is on. I don't know where it is. How do I access it on my Mac OS? I don't know how to do that. It is absolutely terrible. I'm paying 200 rupees to these fools every month. Forgive my language, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm animated, I know, but it's, it's, I have every right to be animated. I've spent so much on a phone and basic functionality, which used to work in 2016, doesn't work in 2020. I don't appreciate it at all. So, um, like I was saying, the iCloud, I, I pay um, money to have more GB every month. Um, I do that just so that I have a backup of this. So it is constantly backed up. I like that. That's a good feature to have because imagine if I lose this phone tomorrow, what will I do? I can definitely just get another Apple phone, iPhone, and I can just click a few buttons and in an hour I'll be good to go. Everything that is on the, this phone will hopefully come to that phone. That's a good functionality. Talking about these apps, there are various apps for your um, iOS. Now, I have noticed, this is something very, you know, strange, but I've noticed that most of the good apps are now paid. What they do is they ask you to use it for three days and then you'll be built, or seven days and then you'll be built. So Apple is become all about your money now. I mean, they want to charge me for iCloud separately, 219 bucks. I pay about 129 bucks um, Indian rupees for Apple Music or thereabouts. So I'm paying like 400 rupees, approximately 400 a month. Where is the sense in that? I don't like it, man. Like, I mean, I don't mind paying, but, but make things happen better. So what do I do for music then, guys? I go to Spotify. Spotify for Apple Music works like a dream. Yep, you're right, Don McLean. They would not listen. So they, there you go. It's a thumbs up. Spotify is my savior. Not only does it have better music and knows my taste better than Apple Music does, it works, goddammit. They haven't changed the interface. They've just kept it simple. What Apple is doing right now is what... I don't like. They're trying to get new fans on board Apple, you know, spaceship, but they are losing their base. When I'm watching a TV show and they show me iOS 7 or an old iPhone, I miss that. So don't go away too far, man. The YouTube app works perfectly. Look, most of the apps work perfectly on the iOS. In fact, they work better than Android. Um, the stability of the apps, the, the you know, the... Then it's more notched up, it's more spruced up, it's more clean, it's more efficient on the iOS. But these little things like paying for iCloud and not having the best experience, like paying for Apple Music and not having the best experience, the music app being so trash, I give it one out of five. I give the music app one out of five and I can't believe I'm doing this. Back in the day, I used to get an iPhone just so I can use the music app and it's no longer an iPod. It's just unfriendly as hell. Um, iOS has ruined everything. Now, let's talk about some other things. I'm going to be complaining a little more, guys. So if you didn't enjoy that, I'm sorry. You should probably switch it off right now. Time to complain about the iPhone 11 Pro Max. There, I said the whole damn thing. Okay. 
Number one complaint with this phone. It has a terrible signal. No matter where I am, no matter what I'm doing, I need to make phone calls and sometimes it just does not connect. But if I go to my Pixel 3a XL with the same carrier in the same position, the likelihood of getting connected is about 33% to 50% more. This does not always handshake with your tower the first time around. So what happens then? I get angry and mad. I should not be angry and mad when I'm trying to make a phone call. I should just be connected to whomever I want to speak at work or my family. But the Apple iPhone has a terrible cell phone uh, strength. I've changed, I've changed the cover. It's not the cover. It's not the case. It's just generally terrible. And believe you me, this is not just with um, the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Previous generations have been equally terrible. If you compare them with the Samsung or if you compare them with a Pixel 3 AXL, those will blow this out of the water. The other thing I don't like is Wi-Fi connectivity can be very choppy and the speed is less. Not only is the cell phone uh, signal not efficient enough, even the, um, the Wi-Fi quality on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, it suffers. It's not very good. Um, so I've spoken about the, the cell phone signal and strength and all that and Wi-Fi signal. I'm going to uh, put that together and I'm going to say it's 2.5 out of 5. Um, and really, this is not acceptable, man. The very basic function of a phone is to be uh, making calls and it's not good. I mean, I, I, I'm happy living with the, this adapter, you know, the lighting adapter. I think it's this final generation. But again, these things, I, I, I don't appreciate it, man. I don't think it should be like that. So I'm going to finally come down and I'm going to just evaluate this phone. Overall, the 11 Pro Max has been um, something which I've enjoyed getting used to. Um, I find it is it has now become home. This is probably why I wanted to wait 80 days before I did this review. Granted, I was very passionate about things I didn't I didn't like, but I said that because nobody else does. Now, when nobody else does something, I will do it because I want the world to know what the truth is. The truth is the iPhone 11 Pro Max is a four star out of five phone. It's a great phone. I'm happy I got it. I'm not getting rid of it for the new OnePlus, for the new um, Samsung, for the new whatever you have it. Um, the photos alone are amazing. Makes me want to stick with it. The operating system, it's getting there. I constantly see that things which I don't like improve in one week. So I think iOS is the most alive and awakened operating system. If only they can get the iCloud music and paid services on track. Because when you're paying for something, you want it to work flawlessly. Not the way Apple wants you to do. So Apple bores you into using it the way they want you to use it. Um, I find that the display is very good. I have read one or two books on this also. Um, so I just download the book from, what do you call it, um, um, the iBook store and most of the ones which I want to read are free because they are classical literature. So it's very good for reading also. I really recommend this for reading. And um, I love the Audible app on the iPhone. I have this app also on my um, Pixel, but I find that I keep coming back to this because it just seems to... Desperately seeking help, they attended a... Point quote, financial workshop. Yeah, so Audible's, uh, Audible app works very good on this. I have the Netflix app. I never use it. I know it's right in my main page right now, but I don't use it at all. I prefer using it on my TV. Um, but it works okay on the iPhone. Uh, if you download something, it just downloads. Um, let's see how much space I've used, guides. So if I go to About, it will tell me the, the space I've used. I have used, I have about 100, 166 GB empty, so I've used uh, the remainder. Okay, guys, um, that was my long review for the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Um, I know you're wondering if this is worth the money I paid. I'm confident I'll be able to sell this in two years for 60% of the price I paid. So keeping that in mind, I think it's a good deal. And... Um, of course, if you lose your phones and all that, then I suggest you don't get this phone. You get a cheaper option. 
How does this compare with uh, Samsung S9 Plus? I find that the S9 Plus has a better screen, has a better um, overall dynamic uh, media viewing angle, but the S9 Plus has a very terrible camera. Um, you have to constantly wipe the, f the camera on the S9 Plus with the iPhone, you don't have to do that. Um, besides that, I find that um, um, Samsung phones have a better screen, better signal strength and all that. So overall, I think the iPhone and Samsung are, you know, you pick any of them and you'll be happy. If you get the S10 Plus today, I'm sure it'll make you as happy as this will. Um, I must also tell you one more thing before you guys go. I was comparing this and the Note 10 Plus, but then I saw Flossie Carter's review on this and the Note 10 Plus and I picked this. And so far, I've been reasonably happy with the phone. I'm not over exuberant about anything except maybe the um, the camera. I think it keeps me very happy. I love taking good photographs. It's a beautiful life, so why not? I also find that this connects to my Fitbit a little faster than my Android. Recently, I've started to notice that. Um, with my banking apps, I feel um, this is not good because uh, it doesn't have the touch option. So I don't, I can't do touch ID. So I don't like that about it. Um, other apps are pretty good on this. I don't use pages. AirDrop works like it uh, works pretty good, but sometimes I've noticed a flaw where it keeps charge sending the file again and again to your Mac OS. If you're AirDropping it, like it'll send it five, six times until I just disconnect it or restart it. I don't like that. How are the wallpapers on this? I don't like them, man. I think they could have done so much better with the wallpapers. Do I mind the notch at all? Not at all, dude. Not at all. It's a lovely thing to have. It looks so good. What's there to mind? I think people just create a ruckus for no reason. Um, one more thing I want to say. Um, the battery has dropped by 1%. Despite me never um, draining it, I've drained the battery just two times since I've had this phone. Like when I say drain, I mean let it just die out completely. So in almost three months, it's only happened twice, yet this is at 99%. I'm a bit peeved by that because it's winter here in India and it's not even subject to any heat. So I don't understand why that is happening. Oh my God, I've spoken so much. I'm getting tired now. All right, guys, um, I suggest you buy the 11 Pro Max, but um, it really depends on what you're looking at. If you have just one phone in the world, I think this is a great phone to have. If you have two phones in the world, you can consider getting a Note 10 um, over the iPhone 11 Pro Max because it's gonna cost you a lot less this, and the screen will be better, the display will be better. Android uh, might work a little better than iOS. Um, but then having said that, I think it's a bit hypocritical of me to say all that because I didn't do that myself and I'm suggesting you do it. So I don't know, man, it really is different strokes for different folks. I don't regret buying this phone. I think it was a smart decision on my behalf. Of course, next year when the new phone, I mean, this year when the new phone comes out, the next iPhone, this will be outdated. But I think it'll easily last the test of time because the battery is 3969 mAh. The weight is about um, 180 to 200 grams with the case, without the case. And uh, other than that, I think the camera is good. The display is decent. The sound is okay. Um, the battery life is okay. I can live with this phone. So there you have it. That's my review of the iPhone 11 Pro Max. There are four color options you get. You get the silver, you get the black, you get the midnight green, and you get the golden. If you are a man, I suggest you get the black or the green one. If you are a woman, I suggest you get the silver or the gold one. I am not a woman and I have the silver one. I. It's just that I, I love the way this looks so much. It looks like an expensive piece of jewelry. And I love the fact that iPhones are made of stainless steel, whereas other phones are made of aluminum. So stainless steel is very good. This has a very nice plush finish on the back. Um, it has a nice raised to wake also. Uh, it, has, it has a very, very nice sharp, not sharp, but very well-rounded, good corners. It looks very premium. And I must say, uh, for the looks alone, I want to congratulate Apple. They made a very successful phone this year. And there you have it, guys. Go buy it. If you have any queries, you can ask me. I'll be your friend. I will let you know. Um, one last note, parting note on the battery. I want to say that the battery is not as bad as I made it sound. Some days, if I charge it to 100% at 10 a.m., um, 
it literally lasts me till 4 p.m. the next day. It'll be at 4% at 4 p.m. the next day. So that's a pretty good battery, something which works for 30 hours and still works. I use it a lot. I get a lot of phone calls, etc. Call quality is decent, by the way. I didn't talk about call quality, but it's very decent. Um, signal is a bit questionable. Um, I find that when I'm talking on the phone, I don't keep it at full volume. I keep it at 70% volume. All right, guys. Thank you. Please subscribe to my channel. I am amazing. It's the best channel. I, my channel is the best channel on YouTube. Like no two, two doubts about it. Also, leave a like. Share this with your best friend and with your enemy. Thank you for watching, everyone. I'm tired now. I want to get back to the cricket game. India is playing Australia today. Bye now.